have you on stage, please. Ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for Bijoya. She's put in a lot of efforts to make this happen today, yes. without a mobile phone and then I borrowed a phone from my brother, the fat Ericsson one. No offense to anyone. No offense. Yeah. Um, I have to think about uh, calling or making a call to a client. Uh, it's okay, I'm loud enough. Uh, making a call to a client because it used to be simple, 16 rupees a minute. Today my friends don't even think, why Chad? Let me call you dude. I can explain much better. I want to talk about how my son keeps on telling me, Mama, these guys are sending me messages. Why can't they send me a uh, reach out to me in WhatsApp? Okay, so SMS industry, I think it's taken a meeting. WhatsApp is the in thing. Personally, if you ask me, I also love to send a WhatsApp message because I know the person at the other end is reading it, but he doesn't just ignore it. It's okay. I want to talk about um, how a certain mobile manufacturer uh, sold so around 12 million sets. I would have never thought about it. I would have never thought about it. I want to talk about how I used to boast to my parents whenever I would go back to Nagpur. My sabji wala also has a phone. But today things have changed. And I know I don't want to talk about any of this. The reason being, all of you guys are here, at some point of other, in your panels, you will touch upon it. So in the interest of time, I have a structured speech, which I'll just wrap off. Okay, I'm a short person, so I go up. Adgali's <laughs> um, endeavor is to create a platform where the leaders in the industry get together to set the course for the mobile industry. A platform from which new thoughts emerge, new agendas are set, and we find a way to navigate the complex world of mobile. As we all know, technological advancements have been upping the challenge factor. Uh, be it the advent and the inevitable adoption of 5G, Samsung's foldable screens, Microsoft's two-screen mobile devices, new solutions for media and entertainment industry, retail, e-commerce, and practically every other sector for that matter. Mobex is just a platform where we all can decipher the future. Uh, a friend of mine decided to help me uh, with some certain snippet. Sudhir, can you just show that? Just a thought to leave behind. You know, this was in 1953, in one of the leading publications abroad, this was published. Where they're talking about, we can't ever get rid of a phone. It'll be a ubiquitous part of our life, wherever we go. But they were just mulling about it. But today, we know a shape, we know a structure. Uh, while in Ericsson, I couldn't do anything. Today, with this phone, I can practically do, I, I don't want a laptop. I want this in my hand all the time. This was <coughs> there. <laughs> Just want to leave you with a thought. Uh, I want to thank all the sponsors who've collaborated with us to put this event together. Uh, MX Play, Sony Live, TikTok, Truecaller, Mo Magic, Red FM, Pivot Roots, uh, my event management agency. Thank you so much. Thank you all. Before I leave the stage, I also want to thank a lot of people who are not here, but who've supported us in our journey. Uh, we've completed 10 years this year. And thank you, thank you everyone who've supported us in our decade-long journey. <laughs> Knowingly, unknowingly, you've supported us. Uh, another thing that I want to share is, uh, it's my platform, so I thought I'll brag a little bit. This is the second edition of Powerful Influencers. There are a lot of people in this room who have been a part of this in the first year, and some of them have made it in this year as well. That's a softer version of that. We shall be launching that soon for you, and it will reach your desk very shortly. Thank you so much. So much from me. I will leave the stage for Mr. Sam Singh. I know I'm late. I'm yet to give you an introduction, sir, but let me just quickly give that. 
And now that he's already here, he's better known as Sam in the industry. He's Samir Singh from TikTok. He's the Vice President Monetization at ByteDance India and is responsible for leading the advertising, sales and marketing strategies across all, platform, all products in India. In a career spanning over 25 years, Sam has been at the forefront of innovating innovative marketing and advertising solutions. In his last role, he spearheaded the operations at Group M as the Chief Executive Officer South Asia, providing competitive advantage with digital leadership and content to clients. I have one more line to go. Prior to Group M, <laughs> Sam has worked at Google, GSK, Procter & Gamble, and IPG across various geographies. Please put your hands together for Sam Singh, ladies and gentlemen. You know, thank you so very much for that, uh, you know, for the introduction. I wasn't sure whether you were talking about me or somebody else. I remember those days of 16 rupees when receiving, um, you know, like a wrong call. You know, you got charged 8 rupees at the receiving end. So a missed call worked, but only half as well as it works today, I guess. My personal favorite beast used to be the Nokia communicator, which those of you who've seen that device, it used to open, screen used to open, keyboard, screen, and I thought I was the cat's whiskers until a decade later when suddenly it looks ancient. Uh, folks, my name is Sam. I have joined TikTok in August. Prior to that, as she said, I was at Group M and, uh, and Google and uh, PNG. Worked and lived in China, India, Middle East, UK, and East and West Coast of the US. Uh, it's been absolutely a fun ride back for the last year and a half. No, two years and a half now that I've been back here. And uh, yeah, I'm going to talk for the next like 15, 20 minutes about what uh, you know what I've observed here at TikTok, and what I walk away with, less as a uh, you know less as a digital platform uh, you know representative, and more as an ex-client, as an ex-agency person, you know really as a marketing person. Like, what do I see? Uh, what's consumer behavior? What are clients doing on this platform? And what should be some of the thoughts that we should walk away with as we uh, look at it? So. Um, uh, at the end of the session, I'll hope to leave you with an understanding of TikTok, hopefully inspire you folks about how to use this platform, and uh, just walk away with a few tips of uh, you know, what you can do tomorrow morning when you go back to your office, and indeed, hopefully, this afternoon. Um, so I'll talk a, l you know, like a little bit about what is the uh, platform first before we go into the advertising side of what this platform is. right? Uh, it's the world's leading destination for uh, short form mobile video and our mission is to uh, inspire and enrich people's lives by offering a home for creative expression and an experience that's genuine, joyful and positive. Right? Platform for uh, trending conversations across the world and it offers a vibrant and buzzing atmosphere that uh, celebrates trends and embraces diversity. Uh, basically, it's a stage. I'll just share with you a short video. So here's the thing about the why of TikTok. Um, it's been at various points in time called a social platform, called a video platform. Yes, there are elements of being social and sociable on it. Um, yes, absolutely, it's video based. But I think the key fact of it is that it's a platform which allows one creative expression. Um, it is probably the simplest video creation tool on this planet. Right? It's a platform that's been designed, uh, you know, kind of mobile first. Um, and that makes it ultra easy to use from a creative point of view. And by the way, we are seeing that in the numbers in terms of the number of creators that we are seeing come on board on our platform. It's just different by an order of magnitude as compared to, uh, uh, to what they were doing before. Second is the ease of consumption. Uh, we have an ML-based you know, system at the back end by which the more you consume, the more the system learns, the more it, you know, it serves content to you. Some kind of a mix between the kind of stuff that you like to see and the kind of stuff that's trending. You don't need to follow anybody. You don't need to make any group. You, you, know, you don't need to uh, make a circle of friends, colleagues, relatives, uh, you know, classmates, though you can do all of those things. But really, it's a platform that lets you, you know, kind of create easily and consume easily. 
And that's what really is the true driving force behind this platform. Um, it's a platform that allows, uh, you know, that actually enables communities. Because it is um, so easy to create content, so easy to consume, it's mainly video, very little text, uh, enabling a lot of global cross-border movements of content, right? So that's the third thing that comes in, which is the, um, you know, which is the community part of it. You could start with a piece of content that's been created in Bel Air, back in, uh, in US, which then lands up you know, in Bombay and gets transformed into something else. From Bombay, it could go to Berlin and, get, you know, you know, and, you know, and like go through the transformation again, finally land up in Brisbane. Uh, and you will see the same piece of creative getting morphed, getting changed. And so the one that you see in the end you know, kind of has the DNA of the one that started, but it is very different from where it, uh, from where it originated. The fourth part, which is really, really interesting for me, and I find this amazingly surprising for a platform which is ostensibly based on music, dance, Bollywood, all this kind of stuff, is the way that this platform and the, um, and the fans of our platform react to causes. And we'll talk a little bit more about it later on. I think it's a mix of the nature of the platform and the kind of users that, you know, that get attracted to it, more of Gen Z, millennials, people who actually fundamentally believe in a world of causes as against my generation, which was pretty much a Me Too generation. And when you bring these two together, like magic happens on this front. So, before we go into a few specifics, I just want to pull back and just like walk you folks through our really short journey. It's been a short journey, but it's been an, you know, it is a very interesting and a very, instructive, very instructive one. Uh, it's a global journey. Uh, today it spans, uh, you know, 150 markets and 75 languages. Um, and, uh, you know, as I'd said earlier, it's probably the first large platform that's been designed mobile up. Right? In fact, I don't even think we have a website. There is no TikTok.com that you can go on to and start, like, you know, kind of fooling around on your desktop or your, you know, or your laptop. Um, and with the kind of response that we have, we are incredibly humbled and grateful to our fans. Let's walk through this journey in, in some more detail with a specific on um, India, right? Started in 2017 when ByteDance acquires Musical.ly. So that's really how old this whole platform is, right? We are in 2019 today, so, you know, give or take two years plus. Got branded as TikTok. Uh, and uh, in December of 2018, it starts, you know, kind of, um, you know, kind of zooming up as the most downloaded app across different platforms in different geographies and certainly in India. The India office, I just learned uh, the other day, was actually established on Christmas Eve last year. So that's like December 25th, we're heading towards the first anniversary here. Um, we launched our safety center in 10 major languages in March. So when I compare this to my journey on like other platforms with, you know, and with other companies, what took them this long to do is something that this platform has started doing in a much shorter period of time. Really learning from our peers and, uh, and implementing that. So, so this was one of those where within six months of having an operation on the ground, we actually had our safety center up and running. Yeah. Uh, we had a minor hiccup in, uh, you know, in April. Many of you may be aware of the temporary takedown. But the platform actually bounced back within a week and bounced back really well. And, and what we were seeing in terms of downloads and users actually accelerated you know, even more from that point onwards. And we reclaimed the number of, uh, like the number one position once again in, uh, in the month of uh, May. Um, month of May again, we hit about 200 million users with about 120 million actives, and that was in May. I mean, every day when I kind of look at the numbers, it's a new number, it's like our meter on the fuel pump, right? The moment you kind of open the nozzle and the number just keeps like moving forward. Uh, that creates stress for me. This fortunately creates happiness. So numbers have been really accelerating, and we are really, uh, you know, we are really happy about that. We did our first TikTok Creators Lab in uh, in Mumbai in the month of uh, June, and uh, July was when we announced our plans to establish an India data center. I believe we are one of the first companies to actually have said that that we will do that for consumer data and set it up only uh, uh, set it up in India. Though even today it is actually in the U.S. and Singapore, which is as per you know standard kind of peer group company policies. Uh, we did our first uh, you know brand safety campaign, you know hashtag wait a sec to reflect. Uh, that was done in August. Really, what we realized as a platform was with the way that we were growing and the way that digital has grown in India. Right in the last about four years, it's gone from the 30 million users who would have been happy paying kind of 16 rupees for a call to now to about 450 million users and growing really on the back of, uh, 
of what our friends in the, you know, in the telecom industry have done with like low cost handsets and really low data prices. Um, and this growth has actually fueled on the back of it with a lot of new people coming into the digital ecosystem. This next 400 million users who've come on board are not clones of the first 40, first 50, right? The first 40, 50 people are sitting in this room, right? And the next 400 million are people who are not even maybe within a kilometer of this place, right? So how do we help them become uh, more, uh, more responsible digital citizens, content creators and content consumers? So that's a campaign that's very uh, dear to our heart. And that resulted, uh, you know, kind of culminated into our, uh, into our more uh, strategic project, which is hashtag edutalk. And we'll talk more about that, la uh, like more about that later on, uh, in terms of educating people and partnering with them. Um, and in October 2019, we did our uh, hashtag TikTok Diwali. It's the second year that we are doing it. And this time we saw about 11.8 million videos getting created with about 17 billion views in 10 days. So that's the scale at which this platform uh, you know, grows. It's about 3.3 million videos uploaded only on the day of Diwali. Now, why do you see those kind of numbers? Because if you multiply 200 million users with about half an hour you know, of like viewing a day with an average video length of about 15 seconds, you suddenly see why the numbers start, uh, you know, start like multiplying the way that they do. And these are all India numbers, by the way. We are not talking about global out here. So, um, yeah, that's what it was in terms of numbers. Let me see if I've missed anything. No, pretty much covered that. Let's talk a little bit about content trends. So we are trying to cover up and I'm trying to take you through a journey on, on the why of the platform, like the history of the platform, uh, who are our users, and what kind of content are they you know, are they creating and consuming? So the interesting one on content is that, uh, despite the standard kind of belief, which it is, you know, short format, music, Bollywood, maybe jokes, with 200 million users kind of, you know, downloading our app and using it, we're actually seeing like multiple nuances emerge in India, right? And uh, really these are our top categories. So top categories are actually tech, sports, dance, motivational and music. Those are indeed the top four, uh, I mean, top four or five. And there's no surprise there. The ones that are growing the fastest are things like education, food, and travel, you know, followed by beauty, gaming, DIY, and singing. Um, and those would be categories that one would say, really, on TikTok, the platform? I'll show you some content later on which kind of brings some of this to life from a CSR perspective. In fact, I'll talk about one of, this, uh, one of these. There's this lady who has a huge fan following, and, and every day she puts out a 15-second video where all that she does is says three phrases in Hindi and translates them into, you know, into English. Three phrases, three phrases. Bite-sized pieces of helping people understand that if you are a, I mean, if you are a native Hindi speaker who doesn't know English all that well, you know, how does it translate into English? And the interesting part about her is she is a hardcore kind of a London girl. So she has a Tate Punjabi accent, but when she gives the English line, it's pure Cockney. So she will like do that translation and, and suddenly it'll be a, I mean, it'll be a version of the Queen's language that at least we don't speak around in these parts. So that's kind of on the uh, categories, and obviously these five categories contribute to about 60% of, um, of the content. Yeah? Okay, so where are we headed with 200 million uh, users, right? It's obviously beyond male, uh, you know, metro and millennials. That was the first 35 million, the starting point of indeed the digital journey, you know, of this nation. And also the starting point for TikTok, but very soon and also because of the ease of uh, usage, it's, it's percolated really fast. In fact, just today I was, I was communicating with a friend of mine who runs a CSR practice for one of the big uh, consulting companies and she was sitting in a small town in, uh, you know, in India saying they were doing a research among consumer students and, and the amount of, um, of TikTok you know, usage that they found, she wants to now have a conversation with me on how the NGO can use the platform to communicate more you know, with people in small towns, which I found really, really, really um, interesting. Okay, so we've spoken about the users as well. Let's talk a little bit about what's the nature of the content in terms of format of the content, what kind of principles to keep in mind on what works, what doesn't work. Uh, some of these are based on our database learnings. Some of these are more intuitive and qualitative. But let's talk about that. So really there are four words that we kind of like to use. And, and then obviously like being from a good, good modern day company, they will translate into an acronym. So I'll share the acronym also with you guys. But really the first point is short format video. 
right? The average length that we are seeing is about uh, 15 seconds. Uh, what we are finding among users is they all multitask. I mean, kind of an eight second kind of a wingspan on, you know, in, you know, in terms of attention. So the shorter you go, the better off you are. So that's the first point. The second point is uh, influencer led. And influencers on TikTok is not necessarily a mega star, though they are there as well. It could be an average Joe or an average Jane or an average Sandeep or Sandita, right? you know, in a small town who people just follow because they like to see their content. Um, and they are not, uh, they may or may not be influencers that people are having a communication and a dialogue with. They are purely influencers from the point of view that people are viewing their content because they like their content, because they like their content, their content is getting served to them. It doesn't even need any major hard following by people, though they do that, but that's not really a part of it, right? The third one is native. Uh, the more from a brand communication point of view, you create content or create an experience actually, which makes it seem like native to the environment, the better off you will be. And once again, I'll share some examples with you of that work. And uh, the last one would be um, in terms of co-create. Uh, this goes back to the earlier point that I had said, which uh, that this is an audience that actually, and this is a platform, when you bring those two together, which makes, makes it really easy to create talking, you know, working with a generation and an age cohort that really wants to communicate. I mean, those two things are coming together. So therefore, as a brand leader, if you give your, I mean, if you give your, uh, your, your, your users here the opportunity to interact with your brand and do that Jugal Bandi is when true magic comes on this platform. And no surprise there, the acronym that I was talking about is SYNC in this case, right? So short format, influencer, native, and co-create. Now what I'll do is to, is to bring it to life a little bit more. I'm gonna take you through one example each of, um, of these four. Yeah, make sense? Okay, so the first one that I'll show you is a short format and what you will see about this is it's been made by a user. There's nothing brilliant about that. It's the use of special effects. You know, I told you as to how easy it is to make content on this platform. It's ridiculously easy to also kind of just jazz up your video whether from an acoustic point of view or from a video point of view and this is one example of that. So that's it, as simple as that. She may have taken about 10 to 15 minutes to make this video, tops, not more than that. In fact, I urge each one of you to download the app and don't just download it as, as passive users. Do that for a few days and then you'll see how quickly the platform starts serving content to you that you actually like and enjoy. Uh, but also, I mean, use the platform as a content creator. Just create, vid just create videos for yourself to see how, how easy it is. The next one is Nagma, she's an influencer. So remember in sync, S-I, so that's the I. Uh, she's a business school graduate. Uh, she, um, she talks a lot about fashion, style, that kind of stuff. And I believe that as of last count, she has about 11 million actual followers. Uh, that's not the number of people who are viewing her content, but people who actually uh, follow her. And this is a, you know, kind of a set piece that she, uh, like that she has created for a brand. Hi guys, so One Million Audition is back with a bang and this time they have the most beautifully crafted Honor 10 smartphones as their content partners. Auditions are starting from the 17th of May, that is today and it will end on the 31st of May. And there are many categories to take part in such as food review, special skills, sports, singing and my favorite, wines. So join the 1 million audition and stand a chance to win this beautiful phone on a 10, beauty in AI. So go ahead, make amazing videos. Bye. So that's an example of influencer-led work. I'll show you an example now for like native content. And really the interesting one here is a couple of things. One is that you know, among the many features that you find when you create content, there's one called a duet which lets you put in your own version of what an original video is. Remember I was talking about the example of something starts in New York, it goes to like New Delhi or, or wherever it was, Beverly Hills, Bombay, whatever. And as it hops across, there's one version, you put the second version next to it, like somebody else, you know, like keeps your version but removes this. I mean, so it's a new version. So the original one is completely gone but the story is continuing. And then somebody else will, will like wipe this one out and put their own version. I mean, it's a bit like the Greek mythology kind of the, the you know, the sh ship of Theseus which starts off as a ship, and then you keep changing parts until all the parts are changed. 
So is it the same ship or is it a different ship? It's probably the same ship, but it's not. Uh, this one is on Flipkart and there is brand content that's used. And then the guy on the left has created his own version. So that's uh, average, you know, TikTok like user who has taken on this brand message, taken a few elements from it, and then made it his own in his own unique way. So this guy has done this purely because he likes what he has seen. He's not getting paid for it. He just wants to exhibit his own creativity and, uh, and created a piece that's now uh, you know, being seen by others. We'll talk more about this kind of stuff later on. The last is a version of co-creation where these two uh, uh, people again take on the content from the brand, which is the soundtrack in this case, and put their own version in, you know, in terms of a video on top of it and have made this brand their own. Abhi, ye kiska hai? Mere hai. Shakal dekhi hai? Are. OLX dekha hai? So these are four examples of kind of things that work on the platform. You know, short format, influencer-led, native, and content. Once again, that same wonderful acronym of ours called SYNC. What I'll do is I'll kind of take a segue here on the side and take you guys through a few of the formats that are more standardly available. So far, we were talking about what works with consumers. And the two formats that I'll start with, one is called Top View and Takeover. They both happen when you open the app. So it's the first thing that happens when you open an app. And they are slightly different in the sense that one is a full... Uh, uh, you know, kind of experience, which is the one on the left, the top view, which can be up to 60 seconds long. And the other one is a three second to a, uh, to a five second. Usually it's a video only bumper, so no sound. Clear picture, real magic. Vivo V17 Pro, clear as real. And what this one is also showing is that you have like a lot of, uh, of like in-app activation features. So if you're more of a performance kind of client, want to take people into a, into a microsite, uh, like into content here, and optimize for, uh, for, uh, for other actions is what you can do. So the last shot that you see is actually the ad then getting replaced by the standard content which is there in terms of the consumer created content and you start swiping then into the regular feed. So that was the three to five second piece. We'll move on from here and go into a standard look at an in-feed ad and no surprise that's going to be your classic, you know, kind of swipe through video. The last one is something that I'm going to share with you, which we looked at like very briefly when, like when we saw the girl create the video with the, uh, uh, with the raindrops, and the raindrops then froze and then moved on, is what's called branded effect. So you have various features built in which you can use for your brand in your own unique way to figure out how can you make the, uh, the, uh, the experience uh, more interesting and interactive. Interesting, in this case, cute, frivolous, but for example, like many of the makeup brands have used similar stuff in terms of changing your hair color, you know, highlights on your hair, makeup, eyeshadow, stuff like that, and you can, you know, keep using effects and, uh, and move them around. And this is obviously, it's a lot more customizable as well. So that's uh, branded effects. Um, lots of stuff on this chart. Like the one that really pops for me is the one on the left, uh, which was an Economic Times article. It first came out as an Economic Times article, like front page, where Flipkart and Amazon were saying that they're seeing a huge spike in sale, of their, in sale of their mobile phone accessories by a factor of 10x, 20x. I think that was the number. 
And really, it wasn't things like your, uh, your mobile phone covers and stuff like that. It was things like cheap tripods and, you know, and cheap lights. And they were ascribing it to the popularity of a platform like TikTok, which is now making almost everybody feel that they are a content creator. So they are going out and buying this simple you know, equipment that you can set up in your own backyard, plonk your phone on top of that, and you're off to the races as a content creator. So that's what it was. Uh, on the other hand, we do have uh, you know, Flipkart, for example, running a successful uh, hashtag billion uh, star, big billion star. And they got like 3 billion uh, views in three days. And that again got uh, you know, covered in, uh, and once again, I think it was Economic Times. I'd love to talk about this last format of ours, which is called the hashtag challenge. Some of you or many of you may be aware of it. Those of you who aren't, I'll just walk you through it. I'll take the example of Pepsi because it covers all the various elements that are there in a classic hashtag. And really what an hashtag is, is you start with branded content. You try to like weave in influencers who, you, who take that same content and its elements and make it your own. Sorry, make it their own. And from there, then the various like users take on and that content takes life of its own, right? So we'll start by looking at what uh, the uh, brand content was, which included Tiger Shroff and Disha Patani as the brand, uh, uh, brand spokespeople. And that's kind of a, you know, similar to what they did on, uh, on television. So this promise of like, her goot me swag hai, which is their like swag concept, was then converted into a hashtag challenge around swag, right? And the hashtag challenge itself was blah, 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 what was the name? What was the name of the hashtag challenge? Swag challenge, there you go. Pretty creative on our part. That was the hashtag challenge landing page, uh, which was the one on the right, where you start seeing other content on it, including content that people start creating on their own, right? And the next set, so these are two influencers on the, on the platform, and then they created their own version of, of what Tiger Shroff and Disha Patani were doing. And as you can see from the numbers, um, they've got about 10 to 12 million fans, generated about video views of about two, two and a half million, and engagement was around the 200,000 range. And by engagement, we mean people taking some action, you know, like clicking on something, uh, clicking on a, you know, on a like, a page, so there's something that they are doing to engage more with the content and, and take it somewhere else. And I'll just play these two together in sync because the soundtrack is the same. So this girl on the right, like Anishka Bhatia, uh, she was, uh, she's kind of, you know, in the Bollywood ecosystem, last seen with Salman Khan in, uh, what's this movie, Prem Ratan Dhan Payo, 20 year old. And the guy on the left is Manjul Khattar, he is a BCom graduate from Gurgaon. Very different personalities, very different kind of ecosystems, their, their worlds will never collide and, you know, and, and cross paths unless you pull them into something like this, right? Now, on the next page, I'll show you a couple of examples of where the users took off on their own. So, so far, it was kind of paid owned content. This is hardcore earned in the sense of this is how people are reacting back to the platform, right? <laughs> These were the numbers that we are talking about on, on how this campaign did, right? 3.3 billion hashtag views to a, you know, like a quarter of a billion in terms of engagements. 35,000 plus official videos created. So these were, so out of these 35,000 plus, maybe 10 may have been from Pepsi and their influencers. So balance 34,990 were created by people, which are part of those 200 million. They created those videos and it was their version of what the brand was trying to communicate. Uh, and then obviously there were 16,000 fans who were actually following the brand page, though that's, that's almost incidental to this. So a really clever use of, making use of paid media to, uh, to, like, to, to set the fire. Wonderful brand assets, good story, highly engaging, uh, in sync with the users and their profile, and suddenly the numbers just go off the roof. 
yeah. So um, that was on that. We'll move to the next one, which is really around. Um, remember, I talked about um, doing things, causes, how people react and behave. I'm going to show you three examples of this. They're all looped into the same video. So first one is around you know hashtag Clean India, which is our take on the whole Swachh Bharat thing, and there will be an example of that. The second one of uh, like was about hashtag Your Life Matters. Uh, it's really in terms of you know. It, in terms of suicide prevention. So that was one of the topics that we felt may resonate with our uh, target audience, so we ran a campaign around that. And third one was about hashtag wait a sec to reflect, which is really more about being more responsible content creators and content consumers in a digital ecosystem. So these three were triggered at different points in time. Cumulatively, the three of them between them have got about seven billion views. So that's once again the scale of the platform that we are talking about for, a, for three causes. We are not talking about brands, we are not talking about music videos, we are not talking about highly immersive movie experiences, we are talking about causes. And causes like you know, clean India, uh, suicide prevention, and being a responsible digital citizen. Right? That generated about 7 billion views. La, 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 la. for dying by suicide, but most of us don't have the training to pick it up. Do you have a friend who is sad, who is perhaps withdrawn quite suddenly, uh, perhaps unusually anxious, moody, angry even, uh, not sleeping or eating properly, perhaps doing dangerous things like hurting themselves, drinking a little too much, perhaps like, giving away possessions, talking about death, uh, saying goodbyes that feel a little different to you. As I'm saying this, if one of this even rings a bell or perhaps you're thinking of somebody, uh, perhaps you have a friend who needs help and perhaps you could be that person to help them out. Uh, to know how to handle such a situation, you could sign up to be a gatekeeper at www.spiff.org. Wait a sec and reflect. Yeah. Purana post karo, purana share karo, purana comment karo. Just wait a sec and reflect. Yeah, just wait a sec and reflect. Those were three examples of, uh, you know, of like cause-based, uh, you know, initiatives and action on the site. I'll summarize like three things that I walk away from a presentation like this. Uh, first one is democratize creativity. Make it as, you know, involve as many users as you can. Use short format and co-create as a way to like really drive that. Uh, see this is a platform that does everything from like upper funnel to uh, lower funnel. In fact, it is actually, it's got full funnel, uh, you know, options. And third one is refine engagement with hashtag challenge and brand lens. So that's kind of three things that I walk away from something like this. As a last point, I will leave you with a video. Uh, this is a video of a, a case study put together with Nike uh, for an activation that was done in, uh, in Italy. And this was really about um, seeing women and, and engaging with women in a very different light from the point of view of health and uh, fitness. And like among other things, like it resulted in a cons entry for, uh, for Nike. So I'll leave you with this. Welcome to Milan. Welcome to Milan for young female athletes. How do we smash through this attitude and get 150,000 young women moving in a culture of sport that's trying to keep them out? Well, turns out they were already moving. Not here, but here. This is TikTok, home of the dance challenge. Unwelcome at gyms, courts and pitches, this is where girls are jumping, kicking, shimmying and sliding. And if they're already doing all that, we knew we could reboot sport for a whole generation. We paired three TikTok stars from Milan with three elite Nike athletes to create dance challenges made from the sports that had rejected them.
who put out the call to arms on TikTok's first ever brand page and left the rest up to the TikTokers of Milan. And they stepped up in their thousands. Milan paid attention, followed by the rest of the world. Meaning we've gone from here to here. Starting the ball rolling on a new era of Italian sport culture. All right, folks, thank you very much. And I really hope that the last 20 minutes was a good use of your time. Thank you. It certainly was. Thank you, Sam. Do you have a TikTok account, by the way? Do you have a TikTok account? Of course. No, I don't have an account. Okay. I have my own private videos. <laughs> All right. You're not going to post them on TikTok, right? All right. So before we get going, can we have the sponsor, AV, please? had a sensational 10 years and I wish I could release another 10 years of even more sensational, amazing success and being the voice in the industry and all that. Look forward. Amazing. Artyas, congratulations to Ad Gully for finishing, the, completing the 10 years and I wish you all the very best for the next 10 years. years of Ad Gali, all the best. Wishing the Ad Gali team, uh, the entire team, a happy decade in the past and a big uh, next decade coming up. It's been uh, glorious uh, interacting with you guys and keep up the good work. Congratulations to Ad Gali on the completion of 10 successful years. I remember the time several years back when I met up with Bijoya for the first time and uh, you know seeing from those days till today it's been a phenomenal journey so all the best for the next 10 years congratulations congratulations team Matt Gully and uh, Bijoya as well as all the other team members Kalpana and all the young bright journalists working with Matt Gully uh, I think it's a great achievement to turn 10 and uh, while we all in the industry have had the privilege of your reporting for a long while now, I think you are taking some time off to celebrate uh, the 10th anniversary. I wish and hope the best for you and hope that you continue to be strongly associated with the industry and keep reporting wonderful new developments. Thank you and all the best. Congratulations Radgali on completing 10 years. Radgali has been like a lighthouse which has been uh, showcasing whatever work is happening in digital area. And it's like a reference point, you know, when you want to know something about some campaign, about some work that is happening, some issue about the digital industry, the place one goes to is Radgali. And one looks forward to receiving the regular emailers which keep you updated about whatever is happening in the digital world. So Radgali continue doing the great job, continue showing the way and continue guiding the industry. Congratulations once again.
Jail.